Is it fair to say, because I, I was listening to your album on the way home from work one night and really enjoying it. I'm a massive fan of the Beatles. It's, it's quite Beatles influenced, I think. Was that fair to say? People say it's Beatles or Traffic or Small Faces or Paul Weller and it's not intentionally really. And I don't sort of sit around and listen to old records to try and uh, emulate them in any way, but I mean, BDI are quite Beatlesy, aren't they? They are, yeah, no, they're very much. I mean, I, there's several bands, really. But um, I've got to be honest with you, that wasn't a set plan, really. I was just trying to trying to dress songs up in a, in a different way, really, and I was trying to make it psychedelic. Which, I mean, if you mention those words, they're all kind of cod phrases, really, aren't they? Uh, which you can all link back to the Beatles, I suppose. You know, they were the, probably the best pop band of our, of our Definitely. time, really. Definitely. But uh, it wasn't intentional, and... Uh, also, with I was only still using guitar, drums, and bass, and um, it's kind of they've been used for the last sort of 40, 50 years, haven't they? I suppose, and I suppose the Beatles pushed that to the forefront. So I can see what you're saying. It's retro. Yeah. No, I re I really enjoyed it, and I what actually wonder because I'm not I'm not heavily musical myself. Like I don't play apart from I taught myself to play guitar once. I'm not that brilliant. But I can hear that the album probably t took you quite a lot of time to put together. Is that, is that right? No. But no? Two, oh, right, two, okay. and half, two and a half weeks. Really? Three weeks. I had about 75% of it written and I wrote the other quarter in the studio sort of as we were rolling along really. Okay, so writing though, how long would that have taken you? Is that something that you do while you're out now, sort of touring? Well, I had a lot of the old guitar riffs and lots of the old music for quite a few years, I suppose. And then it culminated in me co-writing a lot of the songs with Andy Crofts, who plays with the Moons and he's the keyboard player with Paul Weller. Um, and that was done while we did it. We did a three-month tour late last year with Weller. And it's culminated in, in a, we just record them as demos in either hotel rooms or, or backstage somewhere. Uh, yeah, so it was to that point, I suppose, 75% of the album was done late last year. And then, uh, yeah, the rest was uh, kind of made up on the spot, really. Can I talk about Paul Weller? Because he, he features on the album, and I know you're a long-term friend with Paul, but how did, that, how did that come about, you and him, becoming friends? Uh, well, we Ocean Colour Scene supported him in 91, I think it was, and in 92 he gave me a call to um, play guitar in his band, which is, what's that, 18 years ago? Yeah, so I've been lucky enough to be part of his live and playing on his record since then, you know. OK, and... Um, and we sat in his van. What, now? Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. So, yeah. thi so this is actually Paul Weller's van, he owns this? He does, yeah. And he's lent it to you for your... your... Yeah, he did, yeah. That's kind of him. Yeah, that's very kind of him. <laughs> Does he own any splinter vans? He's got a collection, yeah. Has he? Yeah. Okay. He, puts, he puts them all on his mantelpiece. <laughs> um, also, uh, this is... Well, I, I was quite intrigued to find that James Buckley, who I, who many people will know from The Inbetweeners, I think most people know him from The Inbetweeners, um, but he's kind of got that kind of mod image. And, and how did you get to have him on your album as well? Because it's not just about you saying, I'll oh, come and play a gig for me. It's, it, you know, you've actually allowed him to come on your album as well. Yeah, well, he he, uh, he came to the Ocean Colour Scene gig at the Albert Hall last October, and uh, I just mentioned to him that I was going to be recording a new solo record, and he said, "Would could I could he come down and play guitar?" And I just said yes, really. I didn't know if he could play guitar that well. Or, sorry, that's all right. Or um, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know really. But he came down with his lovely girlfriend Claire, and they uh, they spent a week down at the cottage and at the studio with us, and. Um, they just chilled out a lot of the time, really, and then every now and then he'd sort of play. He played on three songs, I think, in the end on the album. Did a bit and, of singing. And he was obviously good enough. He is. He's really good. He's quite. Um, he's quite Gallagher-esque, really, on the guitar playing. I think he'd admit himself that I think Noel Gallagher's one of his all-time heroes. And um, but we just spent. You know, my children are down there most of the time, and we just sort of. It's quite a family orientated thing, really. It's not quite nice and. Relaxed and and I hear that he actually comes on and performs occasionally at some of your he gigs. Came and played with us in London two nights ago. Did he? And he's going to come to Brighton as well. Yeah, which is quite funny to see him sort of shitting himself. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, That's yeah. a bleep. <laughs> bleep. But yeah, but to see it's really funny to see how nervous he is about it all. Really. Well, it's taking him out of his comfort zone, isn't it? Which obviously he's it acting. Does. Well, actors are always out of their com comfort zone, aren't they? First time I met him, I was sort of saying all the gags from in between and things like that. 
well, uh, what, you, what you mean. So, I mean are, you, are you a fan of in-betweens? Yeah, yeah, hugely. Yeah. But it's like the same with most actors, I think. They're not, they're not the people that they're portraying. Yeah. And it'd be, you know, wrong of us to think they were, really. It, it's, I, I think it's really refreshing, actually, the way that you guys work, because you're obviously quite free to go off and do your own stuff, as well as come back together and, and collaborate with other people as well. Is, is that, is that your, just your mentality, or is that just something that is, is just born out of, I don't know, your experiences with other people? And Well, I always fancy doing it anyway. It's like the old jazz musicians, that, I suppose, that, you know, they, were, they would come in and out of different people's bands, wouldn't they? And then they would do their own thing, you know, and they'd be under someone else's... Uh, well, it's just that they would be freer about playing, really. Sometimes it can dissipate, maybe, these days from the from the power of a band, maybe. But I think you have to just do what you want to do individually, you know, really. Mm. And, uh, I've all, I mean, I've always kind of tried to do it. I did a single with P.P. Arnold back, you know, back in 97 or something. I did the Carnation thing with Liam. That's right, yeah, I remember that. So there's always been a few things that I've been lucky enough to, uh, to do that is outside of the group. OK, I'm just going to finish off with just asking you a few sort of very personal questions in the sense of... What's your your best moment in your music career so far? If you could if you could pinpoint one piece where you thought, you know what, this is absolutely brilliant, and I'm so lucky to do what I do. Well, I'd like to be brave enough to say it'll be this evening. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you take it every every day as it comes. Yeah. Okay. And I always find it really difficult if anybody says to me, "What would be your favourite all-time song?" I can never answer that. So I always say to people, "What would be in your top five? Do you know what your all-time favourite song is, or...? Generally. Yeah. Yeah. Because somebody like you, connoisseur of music, work with lots of people, you know, you've got a lot of influences well, and things. Any way, anyhow, anywhere. Uh, try a Little Tenderness, Otis Redding. Mm. Uh, Pity Poor Alfie by The Jam. Elephant Stone by The Stone Roses. And... What by Judy Street. OK, I haven't heard that one myself, but I will you go... You must and... have done. No, I will check it out. The, the, song. the other ones I've heard, I haven't heard that one, but um, it's always nice to learn something when you talk to people. So, Steve, listen, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to seeing you later. Yeah, great. You're welcome. Nice to see you again. Cheers. Man.